We don't need y'all to talk about us because we're going to talk about ourselves. Welcome in, everybody, once again to another episode of Titans Tube. We're coming back at you with another video. That's it's going to be like three straight videos in three straight days. That's how we do it. Thanks again. Shout out to Caleb and Amy. Continuing to pump out those weekly picks, providing some great OG Titans content right there for you. Um, but Jake, we have got a huge, huge divisional game this week. Coming off uh, just the thrill of sweeping Indianapolis. We got to go into Houston, Jake. And yes, they're one, four, and one, but this game and this team, Jake, they, they should not be overlooked. They continue to give us trouble no matter what their record is or who they're trotting out onto the field, whether it's a Tyrod Taylor coming into Nashville and getting a W in, uh, in Nashville last year against the Titans, or it's Davis Mills hooking up with Danny Amendola, giving our defense nightmares, and we barely yes. squeaked by in Houston last year. Uh, this team should not be underestimated. Maybe is it a matchup problem? I don't know. But this team always comes to play uh, when the Titans come come knocking. So, um, yeah, a, a big big time storylines for this game, especially regarding uh, Tannehill's injury status and Jeff Simmons' injury status. I believe they're both questionable going into the game. But man, it would make us feel so much better if that could be green lit and we could see them on the field. But if we got to go to Malik, I mean, Jake, I don't know. How do you feel? How do you feel about this game? And, and are you ready for Malik to maybe come in and call some shots with the offense? Man, oh, man, Justin. I don't know how I feel, man. Uh, you, you got it off the bat completely correct. We cannot underestimate the Houston Texans. I mean, look at the last four matchups uh, of these two teams. Uh, they were three one-score games. Two of those were by three points. And the fourth game, Houston won, as you alluded to. Uh, yeah. Tyrod Taylor coming into Nashville and winning. So there's no, no matter what the record Houston is, no matter, you know, how long they've been in the basement of the power rankings over the past several years, we cannot count out the Houston Texans. I don't know if it's the franchise rivalry in terms of the Titans came from Houston and there's an Oilers uh, thing mixed up, but I, there's just <laughs> something about the Texans where they kind of have our number in terms of playing us at least close or making – uh, you know, life really, really hard, even though you are going up against a, a one, four and one squad uh, in terms of the Malik Tannehill situation. Uh, either way, Justin, this is going to be kind of a spoiler alert for down the line in this preview. But no matter who's at quarterback, be it a one legged Tannehill or a Malik Willis, I want them to hand the ball off to Derrick Henry 30 plus times. So either either quarterback who is in there. I hope they do a lot of handing off and a lot of kind of hands off <clears throat> approach to this game. Uh, but we'll see. I'm excited for number seven, Malik Willis, to possibly get his first NFL start in the two tone blue. Who wouldn't be excited? What Titans fan isn't uh, very excited for that possibility? But obviously you want to see 17 back there. Your your franchise leader, your Iron Man. Uh, we just said last week he set the record for consecutive starts in a Titans uniform at quarterback. Uh, three cheers for Ryan Tannehill for that. And it, it, it would be it would make me a little bit sad at the same time, Justin, to see Malik Willis start because Tannehill has been such a steadying presence. Yeah. Yeah. You, and you like to see that that streak continue on mm -hmm. uh, that, that he's had here as the quarterback. But. I, I, I agree with you, regardless of who's back there. I mean, Derrick Henry is just playing like a man on a mission this year. We've mentioned it throughout throughout the season. And just looking at him run and the tough yards that he's just continues to grind out, even when he's hitting the backfield and dropped immediately for four-yard losses, he comes right back in and, and takes the handoff again with 100% effort and just fight. And he, he's looking – we need to lean on him to lead, continue to lead this offense with this lack of wide receivers – uh, and lack of consistency and, you know, handle on the game kind of play calling that, that Do Todd Downing kind of uses, utilizes. And he needs to utilize a better, you know, I, I, I like how a lot of people have put this. He, it doesn't feel like he has a good flow for the game. Mm -hmm. Like when something is working, 
He'll just go away from it and do the sweep handoff to Malik Willis out of nowhere when Henry is running well at a crucial moment in the game. And it's, I, I, I want to see, I want to see Todd in the zone with what's happening on the field and continue to play and put our players in the best situation uh, to win. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, the Titans signed, didn't we signed a receiver, Chris Conley. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. the, our prayers have been answered. We have Chris Finally. Conley to add to the wide receiver group. I don't know. I don't know if the answer is out there in free agency or, or what, or on a practice squad. Odell Beckham Jr., hello. Josh Gordon didn't work out. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know if I want to bring OBJ down here, but there was some interest. I heard some talk. He said he wouldn't mind coming down here and playing in Nashville, but I guess J-Rob's not interested if he signed Chris Conley instead. But uh, either way, either way, let, let's give the ball to Derrick Henry. Um, but starting off, Jake, let, let's get into this game and kind of what the Texans are bringing to the table offensively. It, it starts with uh, Davis Mills at, at quarterback for Houston. Uh, he is a pro bowler. When he does suit up against the Titans, he looked like a great quarterback. And he's, he's been a good quarterback, especially from where he was drafted. I think a sixth round draft pick. And he's kind of proven himself that he's kind of hard to cut. I haven't watched like every Houston game. I'm sure he has his mistakes, but he continues to lead the team. He continues to put up a good stat line, at least. I mean, he's, he seems like he he's adapted pretty well to the NFL for a six round pick. So so no overlooking Davis Mills, but kind of the story of the offense uh, for Houston has been Damon Pierce or Damian Pierce um, busting onto the scene here uh, with 504 yards on the year. He is fifth in the NFL, right behind uh, the one true king, I believe. I think Derrick Henry's fourth. So it's kind of, yes. <laughs> he's not quite to the king's level here, but uh, great looking rookie, great draft pick for them. Uh, and grinding it out um, behind a very questionable offensive line, literally questionable going into this game. I believe three of their offensive linemen uh, have been on the injury report, but I guess you got to assume that they're they're going to suit up and go. Um, and as far as their wide receivers go, Brandon Cooks is just a matchup and a problem for us each time we line up and play against him. Uh, Nico Collins, uh, another solid receiver. I think Vrabel said he, he did a Belichickian praise and, you know, Nico Collins, maybe one of the best uh, blocking wide receiver. Of course, he goes to the blocking and <laughs> they, they use him as a tight end and they'll run behind Nico and he's, he's just an outstanding wide receiver uh, for them and really helps their run game. Anyway, singling them out, they're both questionable going into this game. So that would help our defensive uh, pass units if, if they weren't able to go and our run game, or our run defense, if Nico Collins is the greatest wide receiver blocker in the history of the game. Um, but perhaps Brandon Cooks, I'm hearing uh, and reading that he may be intentionally held out because it's not an injury-related uh, reason why he hasn't been practicing, but he's on the trade block. And so they want to keep him in pristine, mint condition. Don't want to don't want to hurt the Brandon Cooks uh, playing on the field if they want to get something of value for him. Uh, so we'll see. I guess that's something that is still developing. But... Uh, that, this Houston offense, Jake, I mean, what do you think? How do, how do you like the Titans defense matching up against him? Uh, I really like this Titans defense matching up, especially because I, I feel like it's been said in a lot of Titans circles and a lot of Titans conversations. Uh, when Bud Dupree is healthy, Justin, this is a different looking defensive front. It is unbelievable how they swarm and feed off of each other. We've seen this dating back to last season. This pass rush is completely different with number 48, Bud Dupree, on the field. So uh, with a questionable offensive line, and if, you know, the top wideouts for Houston can't go, I see a lot of coverage sacks. I see a lot of just uh, absolute bully ball by this Titans offensive line, even if big Jeff Simmons is questionable going into this game with just the aura of toughness we've seen throughout this week with, you know, Ben Jones and, yeah. and how this Titans team is taking on this identity of just real grit and toughness. I would assume Big Jeff maybe goes, but remains to be seen. Uh, again, listed questionable on the injury report. Uh, also, uh, something that I think goes in the Titans' defensive favor, Justin, is getting Amani Hooker back was huge for this defense. And we yeah. saw schematically they were doing a little bit different things with him, lining him up in the slot, uh, just kind of playing around with their personnel on the back end. If you noticed last week, Caleb Farley played two snaps and they were both special team snaps. He could just keep that jersey. It was clean. You know, you could just hang that back up on the locker and wear it this week uh, because <laughs> yeah. seemingly that first rounder is not really working out uh, for the Titans. But uh, 
that aside, so, this this defensive backfield getting creative and getting healthy uh, is is huge for this Titans defense. And we saw them terrorize Matt Ryan last week, which is just a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. And and you gotta wonder if the Titans have found a hidden gem in safety Andrew Adams. He was popping off the screen. He was among the leading tacklers last week for the Titans. Obviously had the long pick six, uh, which was the Titans' only touchdown in the game last week. So hopefully he continues to be a part of this budding secondary that's getting healthy, getting cohesive, and and this defense is just on a tear. Justin, last five or last uh, four or five games, they've just played lights out. Uh, obviously yeah. after that Buffalo game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, j- just giving up 10 points to the Colts and then uh, 17 a week before that to, to Washington. And one of those was a, a Caleb uh, Farley busted coverage. And so mm-hmm. he's not out there to give up the big play. This defense is looking really, really good. I, that's a good point about uh, Amani Hooker coming back and adding to the defense along with the emergence of, of Andrew Adams. So we can kind of play with these, these two safeties, or I guess especially Hooker and moving him around on the defense, mm-hmm. lining him up in the slot, maybe we're able to hide a little bit of what we're not getting from Caleb Farley uh, in the defensive back room. Uh, so, yeah, and then we have Elijah Molden. Somewhere, somewhere along the horizon, he should come back. I'm almost starting to get a Dory Jackson vibes where he just is always hurt, and it's kind of a mystery how he's not back on the field yet. But I know he's he's on IR, like mm-hmm. so technically he's not even eligible to return. But mm-hmm. I feel like he's been on IR the entire season. It's, it's mm-hmm. time. Time to activate him, J-Rob. Looking forward to seeing Elijah Molden back playing for us. But, yeah, the defense trending in the right direction. Hopefully Jeff Simmons, you know, you don't want to force him to go and make his injury worse. But, dude, when he's on the field, another just complete game record. Um, and especially it would hurt because Rashad Weaver has been ruled out for this game. So our, our depth on the D line would be hurting. Uh, but yeah, you, you got to have confidence in, in this defense going up uh, against uh, th- these Texans. As long as we, we got to key in and make sure Damon, Damian Pierce doesn't get rolling, mm-hmm. keep their offense one dimensional, force Davis, Davis Mills to beat us um, with this passing game and possibly lacking in the wide receiver department. Um, But moving on, flipping sides of the ball, uh, Texans defense, um, you had it in the notes here, and I I totally agree with you that I don't recognize very many names on this defense. I mean, no disrespect. Maybe that's our fault for not being Mm -hmm. true, passionate fans of all 32 NFL teams. I mean, much less a a, a heated rival within the division, but not a lot of not a lot of star power on, on the defensive side. But a few guys you got to shout out. Uh, linebacker Christian Kirksey is, is a steady presence, a big leading tackler for them. Um, I guess is maybe like the captain of sorts of the defense. He seems like everything, he's kind of in the middle of everything there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a really good rookie season so far for cornerback Derek Stingley Jr. So we need to be careful if Tannehill's out there throwing passes. And Derek Stingley, I mean, his biggest challenge is going to be Robert Woods, who's He's solid, but he's not, you know, he doesn't blow the top off and he's coming off his ACL injury. So he's he's perhaps lost a half step or a step uh, from what he once was. So Derek, Derek uh, Stingley could could shut da- help shut down uh, this Titans passing game unless we can scheme up something, scheme these receivers open. Uh, but but a great looking cornerback early on uh, in his career. And also they've added Jerry Hughes from the Houston t- or they are the Houston Texans. They added him from the Buffalo Bills. Um, a solid veteran presence over there on the D line on the edge uh, already with four sacks this season. Uh, so, so, that, so they've, they've got talent. It's the NFL. I mean, just because we don't recognize their name doesn't mean these guys can't play. Um, also big time uh, revenge game. Once again, Desmond King again, dude, I kind of, I, I, I liked Desmond King was when he was a Titan. I kind of wish we had resigned him after last season. I mean, I, I thought he brought, some much needed help because we were hurting in the in at cornerback depth last season as well. And I thought he, he helped, you know, come around and, and did some good things for us. And then when we played him last year in Nashville, I think Tannehill threw two or three picks mm-hmm. and he got one of them. So he already had his revenge. So maybe yes. his revenge will, will not, not take, in, take into effect this season. Um, and he's also a solid return man too. So uh, a good thing our special coverage team, Our special teams coverage units uh, have just been lights out, honestly. Underrated aspect of this Titans team is our our coverage. So hopefully that can continue. Um, But, yeah, so so this Texans defense, I mean, they they haven't been great against the run. 
this year as a unit. And dude, that that just spells doom if you look at the past with Derrick Henry against these Houston Texans. He has rushed for 200 plus yards in his last three games against Houston. So can that trend please continue? Because he did miss. He did. He was out last year. Mm -hmm. uh, He missed both games against the Texans. He had already uh, broken his foot. Um, So, yes, these last 200 yard games goes back to to two seasons ago. But but Derrick Henry has had the Texans number. So I, we talked about it earlier that that's got to be the, the game plan, especially with Nate Davis back. Ben Jones is Ben Jones. And then, you know, we're, I'm liking a Nicholas Petit Ferrer. Let's run to the right. Instead of run left, let's go right. I, I, yes. I'm like how the, the right side of this O-line uh, can, can run block for, for Derrick Henry. So anyway, um, yeah, that's what we're looking at against Texans defense. Uh, how are you feeling? Can the Titans offense make some things happen here? It's, you know, it's all about who's going to trot out there at quarterback, Justin. How much sure. can whoever it is do? You know, how much can a hobbled Tannehill do for this offense? How much can rookie Malik Willis do for this offense? Um, and it's, it's, it's going to be all about when they do throw the ball, Justin, you need to protect whoever's back there. You know, Tannehill will be immobile with, you know, a hobbled ankle versus a Malik Willis, who is very mobile and excels in, in scrambling and getting out of trouble and in danger and making something happen. So it's, it's going to be a weird mishmash of an offense. It's tough to read what they will do outside of handing the ball to Derrick Henry 30 to 40 times this game, I imagine. Um, but it's going to be all about limiting turnovers for this offense and, and playing mistake free football. Don't beat yourself uh, in this matchup, especially if you have a rookie quarterback under center, uh, it's going to be about keeping composure and, and just doing anything it takes to squeak out of Houston with a win, no matter who's back there. Um, so you know, kind of spoiling my key to the game. Uh, if I haven't said it six or seven times already, it's going to be feeding Derrick Henry. It's going to be the recipe for offensive success. However, yep. Justin, I was very encouraged to see Austin Hooper pop off the screen for the Ooh. first time all year. Uh, now, do they have the hoop chant in the stadium? Was that a thing? Yeah, last he, week? He, was, he hasn't done enough to establish yeah. a, a routine with <laughs> a the chant. crowd. Like if we had busted out with the hoop after his first like, third down catch I would have been surprised like we were ready this stadium was ready for, for who coming out of nowhere but no he, he let's let's make him effective in this game and then what we have the Chiefs after that and then I think we finally play at home again and if he continues to play well we will have the hoop chance going but yes a like great it. great emergence he's, he's gonna be a much needed asset for this passing offense if we can get him involved exactly exactly so uh, who knows? Who knows? It, it's going to be a mixed bag. Uh, and hopefully Todd Downing is not in his bag uh, on Sunday because we've seen Todd Downing be in his bag and it usually isn't a positive thing. You hear that, you know, yeah. in a, as a good thing. But Todd Downing being in his bag is, is kind of a, a negative thing, especially when he's reaching down at the bottom of those play sheets. And, you know, who knows? He'll have the backward mm-hmm. dipsy do pass from Malik to Chig a Conquo and then Chig will throw a 40 yard pass to <laughs> Hilliard or something. And who nothing's I, off the table. Who can I give it to on a jet sweep this week? We've done it. Yeah. Chig, <laughs> we've done it with Malik. On a crucial uh, third Jones, and one, who ben are we Jones giving out. the ball? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he's just he's just doing some experimenting at like the worst parts of the game. Crucial <laughs> moments. Absolutely. Um, uh, but but Justin, yeah. uh, what are your are gonna be your keys and prediction to the Titans? getting a win in Houston and continuing this trainer role and make it five wins in a row, stay undefeated in the AFC South. How can they do it? And if they can do it, what will the score be? I mean, I, I'm going to have the boring answer and stick to it. This we I talked about it in the, our recap, but this team kind of rediscovering its identity finally, which is clean game on the turnovers part. If you get a couple bonus, that's great, but take care of the ball while you're on offense uh, playing strong defense. Uh, we're going to give up some plays, but but we have the opportunistic defense to come up with a big either turnover or a big sack or a big stop in, in a crucial moment. And uh, in running the football and just being the more physical team. I mean, I think that absolutely was an underrated aspect of the Colts game is that we were, we were just much more physical with them. We were bringing the heat on blitzes. Derrick Henry was just running just straight into the defense, 
hopefully forming some bruising and battering uh, on the on the players' bodies, and they were limping to the locker rooms. I mean, we need to have that kind of mentality. We're the tougher team. We're going to out hit you, and we're going to out phys physicality you. However, you want to grammar size that. Uh, <laughs> And uh, and taking care of the ball and just you know, it li limiting mistakes and yeah keeping keeping the defense, um, you know not giving up the big play, uh, like a huge play. But we're we're gonna give up plays. It's the NFL. People make plays all the time. But but just tightening up down in the red zone, limiting them to field goals, not touchdowns. And so um, yeah, I, I think that that's a lot. But it's our identity. And that we're going to have to play play that way in order to win pretty much every game that, that we want to, unless we have just this emergence of passing offense coming out of nowhere. We can just rifle off 30 points in a quarter. Hello, can we get Josh Heupel in town? UT head coach, be our offensive coordinator, throw him a bag of money. Um, anyway, yeah, could you imagine Josh Heupel running this Titans offense with Malik Willis at running back? Or quarterback? <laughs> or running back, I don't know. That's a Todd anyway. Downing idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, I, I'm going to take the Titans to get get the dub here. I'm going to go uh, 24 to 16, uh, and it's going to be it's going to be close, and it's going to be frustrating and nerve wracking. I mean, we should go into Houston and take care of business, but they all, they they always give us the business. It seems like, but we got to have confidence in the way this team is trending. And so, uh, no trap game, no knock on wood, whatever you got to do. Uh, I got Titans 24 16. Jake, what are your keys and prediction? I love it. I love it, Justin. That was I was leaning toward that being my key. It's just because ever since the Ben Jones and Mike Brable video came out, it's just been all about toughness, grit, and the Titans are going to outlast the opponent. They're going to be the last person yeah. to throw a punch, and they're going to do just enough to win football games, even against uh, less quality opponents like a Houston. Like you said, Justin, I'm fully expecting – this to be a nail biter. I, I mean, can Titans fans expect anything different? We're not going to go out and blow anybody out. It's always going to be four straight quarters of what are we going to do to give this one away? You know, and, and, and yeah. we're just waiting for it, but it, it's going to be outlasting the Houston Texans. They're a one, four and one football team. They're in the cellar and it's just to be about go about your business and, and take care of business and get a crucial divisional win. Uh, my key to the game We've been tracking this stat, Justin. The Titans are now 27 and one when Derrick Henry touches the ball 25 or more times. Now, with a hobbled Tannehill or a Malik Willis, it's pretty obvious, Todd. Even you can see that. Todd. What the game plan should be. Come on, Todd. Todd. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just going to be about playing your game. Don't make any stupid mistakes. If Malik Willis is in there, Malik, man, you can't play hero ball. Don't turn the ball over. Uh, something overlooked, possibly, if number seven starts for this this uh, Tennessee Titans team on Sunday. Uh, Malik's fumbled twice this year. He's got two lost fumbles on the year. He had one in the Buffalo game, which, you know, everybody forgets because it never happened. Yeah, of course. Um, yes. But then, you know, after that, he had the, the fumble on the handoff, which I think was – mostly his fault for not not really securing and receiving that handoff anyways yeah. ball security it, it, crucial for Malik Willis to play it's, it's a terrible ratio number of snaps he's played to fumbles lost on the season it's got to be an all-time NFL high <laughs> we've got to correct the fumbles if he yeah. does come the game yep um I would be excited I'd be excited to see see what he can do but I, I would just feel more confident and more comfortable with Tannehill back there I did I did see a headline just briefly just now, uh, like Ten Hills was spotted, you know, throughout the week, uh, helping coach up Malik Willis. Mm -hmm. So take that for what you may. If he's been in his ear and he's maybe, maybe he will see some snaps. Maybe we'll get a little bit of both in this game. Maybe we'll have some separate packages for for Willis to give Ten Hill a break, or if he's feeling a little a little too much ankle soreness. But uh, yeah, yeah, love it. Love, love the keys here. Um, and I got to get a score, score prediction. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's going to be weird. I'm going to say 23 to 20, Justin, is my final score. The Titans eke out and cover that two and a half point spread. So, okay. so you know what they say, good teams win, great teams cover. So yeah, a three point win in Houston would officially make the Titans a great team. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> We're going to live up to that motto. Uh, um, so that's. Right. 
I think that's going to do it for the game preview. Justin, speaking of spreads and speaking of covering, do you have your three games against the spread for this NFL weekend? I do. I do, Jake. Let, let, let's, let's get through this here. Um, first game I have is uh, Las Vegas going into New Orleans as one and a half point favorites. Yeah, I think they totally get that. They totally cover that. I think they're kind of finding uh, what we thought they were going to be. They got they got a win in Houston last week. And speaking of Houston, uh, the Raiders did beat Houston, I think, 38 to 20, kind of ran away with the game mm -hmm. in the second half there, turning in the right direction. Uh, but then Andy Dalton and the Saints, man, just not, not really gelling, not feeling it. These two teams are kind of trending in opposite directions. I got the Raiders for sure covering this one. And they're little bitty one and a half point uh, favorite here. Um, next one I've got uh, just another opportunity to uh, to trash the Colts. They are hosting the Commanders this week as three point favorites. Hey, uh, you got Sam Ellinger back there. Is, is it going to just be magic game one right off the bat? I don't think so. I think Washington takes not only covers, but they may win this game outright. Uh, they're probably going to lean heavily on Jonathan Taylor. And he's a bit, he's got a little bit of injury here. I don't know if he's hundred percent back. Probably not. He only got 10 carries against the Titans last week. Um, but I like uh, Sam Ellinger in his first start going up against this Washington front who, if they can key in and slow down Jonathan Taylor, then I, I think they take the game uh, with Taylor Heineke at quarterback and not Carson Wentz. That would have been sweet. Yeah. Sweet justice and whatever. If, if Carson Wentz could have gotten a win in, in Indy, but so I got the commanders for my second game. Third game, I'm not feeling this too much. I, I, I just, I don't buy the Giants still at six and one, but they're three point dogs on the road against Seattle, who I'm still kind of not buying either. I'm happy for Gino. I'm happy with what he's doing and he's balling out. And it's great to see, to be, have a career backup for 10 years, come out and start for a team and play extremely well. Feel good story for Gino. But I'm going to take the Giants as, as three-point dogs here to go in and either get a win or, or lose a super close game in Seattle. Um, I, I just, yeah, then they're going to move. I, I guess I'm saying they may well move to seven and one. I don't know how I still feel about that. Crazy. Is Crazy. This what kind of world do we live? <laughs> like the Titans captured the AFC one seed last year, and people were like, not buying it, not buying it. Mm -hmm. It's like, really? And then we went out and lost our first playoff game. So maybe they were right all along. But anyway, so those are my three games, Jake. Uh, take it with a grain of salt. Don't put your life savings on any of these. This is just for fun, people. Just for fun. Jake, a one eight hundred gambler. You know, if you do put your <laughs> life savings on these, uh, yeah. <laughs> I like those picks, Justin. Uh, my first game is Broncos country. Let's ride. Uh, right. I have the Denver Broncos covering plus two and a half in London against right. the London home team Jaguars. Justin, <laughs> uh, this is going to be a stinker across the pond at 9 30 in the morning i'm not sure i'm even going to watch one play of this game but you know russell wilson was doing the high knees on the team plane uh doing training watching oh, film God. he doesn't get jet lagged he never slept uh so it's just it's all about mr unlimited and, and what russell what wilson uh trying to bounce back in this broncos offense but i'm not buying what jacksonville's selling right now give me the broncos plus two and a half in london uh my next game Justin is the Philadelphia Eagles covering minus 10 and a half against the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's a big spread. Yeah. But here's the thing. It's crazy. When you look, you know, you compare the Titans to other teams. Uh, Philadelphia has a clean injury report coming into this game. There's nobody out. There's nobody wow. questionable. They're fully healthy going into this game against the lowly Pittsburgh Steelers. I got them covering uh, 10 and a half points there. Eagles, uh, and my Eagles last, just... go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. The Eagles just added like a pretty decent defensive player, I think. Uh, yes, they traded for the Bears rusher, not Roquan, Roquan, Roquan Smith, but the other one. I can't remember his name. Is it pass rusher? Yes. Oh, uh, uh, Robert Quinn. Is that it? Yes, correct. That's it. Yes, the oh Eagles just traded for Robert Quinn. The rich get richer, Justin. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Rams last year. What is going on? Stop stacking up with these teams. What is this, the NBA? Goodness. <laughs> But classic. Justin, right, uh, my ahead. third game is the Washington Commanders Yay. going into Indy. Let's go. It's still Colts Tate <laughs> week. We're still laughing and pointing at the Colts. Come on, Washington. I would love to see uh, Sam Ellinger 
be treated to a home loss as his first game uh, as the Indianapolis Colts quarterback. And, you know, if the Titans can squeak out the win against Houston and Indy loses, the gap would get just wider and wider and wider and wider. And hopefully uh, that can be the theme moving forward. So I've got the commanders going in and beating the Colts uh, outright. What? Outright, yeah. forget the plus three. Let's go, Commanders. I'm a big time commie. So, uh, <laughs> big time commies this week. <laughs> Love it. Uh, but, but those are my picks, Justin. Uh, take them to the bank or don't. 1 800 gambler. We're not, I don't know. We have no contract to legally say that. But, anyways, but we're, uh, we're looking out for y'all's wallets. It's, it's exactly. A problem. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, do you have anything to take yeah. us to the barn in this preview uh, and NFL picks a video? No, I, I just love that we both picked the commanders over the Colts. The Colts hate week never ends. Um, as far as the Titans go, man, this we do need this game. We, we, uh, we're getting greedy now. We've ripped off four straight, and we're like, we need to win this one. It's must win. But you're looking at going into Kansas City next week, who will, I think, be coming off a bye. So mm -hmm. that sucks. They get to kick their feet up on the couch and watch football all day while and getting healthier and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be a really tough game for us next week. And the schedule kind of ramps up a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, in, in November and on into December. So, so huge game got, got to tighten up and, and get to five and two, uh, this Sunday. And it, that would be a beautiful record, Jake, to, to see after the start we had. So, so big time game, it's going to be a nail biter. We know these Titans are going to make a sweat, sweat for a good three hours. That's, that's what they do to the fans, but we love it. Do, or, or do we? <laughs> it's some kind of sick pain and pleasure thing going on but here we yeah. are every single sunday in front of the tv watching it uh, I, I think that's going to do it justin like yep. comment subscribe all that jazz tighten up everybody have a great football weekend let's go get a crucial divisional win and if music city malik comes and plays let's go it's it's malik go. era it is malik time but, you know, hats off to Ryan Tannehill and his recovery. We hope he comes back soon. <laughs> <laughs> Astrid's also uh, thoughts and questions to Ryan Tannehill. Keep the streak going. Just trying to get the, you know, just trying to get pumped up for the game. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. but that, <laughs> that's going to do it for us. Peace out. Tighten up, everybody. All right. Peace out. See you guys.